All right, Paul, so let's put what we have seen in the spectrum of this object together with what we just learned. So we know in this case, when the object is faint and not in outburst, that we have emission. So that means we sort of have a bunch of diffuse hydrogen that's emitting. We know that there's a lot of blue light here, so uh, maybe there's something hot going on as well. I don't know. And then when we have it in outburst, it means that we have some things happen where we have uh, uh, an opaque emitting black body or something with a bunch of cool diffuse stuff on top of it, also made out of hydrogen. Yep, so here's my uh, toy model. So we start off with see-through gas. All right, there's not a lot of boxes in the sky, Paul. Yeah, well, but... at the moment we've no idea what shape it is, okay. so I just chose a box completely arbitrarily. We have a blob of see-through gas of some description, Yep. Uh, and that's what it's like when it's not flaring. Uh, but then when it's exploding, flaring, we've got an opaque blob or shape or something Right. So with if, gas around it. So if you go back to the uh, this one, that means that the hydrogen here will be excited at for some reason. Something's exciting it. There's going to be and a lot of energy in there. Whenever it emits, it's nice and diffuse, so that light just gets out. And then when we see it in emission, we have all this light coming out from essentially something that's uh, opaque. So it's emitting as a black body, a big bright you know thing looks like not dissimilar to our sun. And then there's this stuff around it, this diffuse hydrogen, maybe the same stuff, that absorbs the light because the light comes out here, excites the hydrogen, and that takes the light out at those hydrogen wavelengths. Okay, so that's the first clue, but it turns out there's another clue you can get from the spectrum if you look really closely at it. This black line here is the real spectrum of one of these objects, uh, the dwarf novae, and you can see down at the blue end, it's got a continuum that slopes up, plus a whole bunch of hydrogen emission lines. That's what we've already talked okay. about. What do you make of that stuff down the red? Well, this red bit looks to me to be like a star that's very cool, what we would call an M star. And you actually see lines here from funny molecules that just simply can't be there at warm temperatures. Yeah, you see all these big dips and troughs up here right. in the black spectrum, and that's what you actually expect from titanium dioxide typically, so titanium right. dioxide molecules. And to have molecules, it has to be cool. Right. Um, if the temperature was very hot, like you're expecting over here, then the molecules would be blown apart. You wouldn't be getting them. So, so this definitely looks like a cool red star. And a cool red star actually has to be pretty big because remember, as you make an object cool, the amount of energy it puts out drops as the temperature of the fourth power. So you're going to have to have a lot of area there in this red star. So kind of a big red star, actually. Yeah, so we've got to add something to our model. We now have our gas. Um, this is optically thin gas because it's yep. at uh, not when it's flaring. And you've got a big red bruiser of a star in there as well. Mm, okay. So we've got two things, gas cloud and star. We, we can't separate them in our images from the Earth. This is all just inside the same dot. Bear in mind, this is all far smaller than one pixel from any, any conceivable telescope on Earth. So, so, Paul, when we have two things in space, they normally orbit each other. Uh, so that might be a signature we could look at in that spectrum. We could look at those spectral lines. And using the Doppler shift, remember the Doppler shift we talked about in um, the first course, uh, is whenever you have something that emits waves, whether it be sound waves or light waves, that if you're moving relative to the speed of sound or the speed of light, you essentially compress the waves in the direction of motion or stretch the waves against the direction of motion. And we can use that stretching, in this case a color shift or a wavelength shift, to measure the velocity very accurately. So do, what do we see in this, in this Yep, case? so I mean, if the, for example, the gas is moving towards us, the wavelength would shift slightly to shorter wavelengths. If it's moving yeah. away, it would shift slightly to the red. And likewise, all these titanium dioxide absorption bands should also shift slightly one side or the other, depending whether the red is dwarf star. And you can plot that. Um, and here is the velocity in kilometers per second. And the field circles are the absorption from the red star. And the round hollow circles are the emission from the lines. And you can see they're doing different things. So the absorption starts off moving away from us and then comes towards us. Whereas the reverse is happening for the emission. The emission starts off coming towards us and then goes away from us. You've kind of got the red star starts off going away while the gas comes towards us. And then the other way around. So they're yeah. alternating. And it's interesting that the... The stuff from the diffuse material seems to be moving uh, as fast as the big red star. So there's like 
lots of mass, because we know the star's got to be pretty big. So that means that that gas has got a lot of mass as well. So that's interesting. Yeah, so presumably our model is going to look something like this, that we're looking at the gas cloud and the red star orbiting around their common centre of mass. So the red star is now going away from us, so the gas is coming towards us, and it swaps around, and this is happening. It's happening very fast. The time scale is only a few hours for this to go around. These are going around at some enormous speed, hooning, as we'd say in Australia. Right, so now, there's got to be a lot of mass involved, and they've got to be very close to each yeah. other. And you have to bear in mind, you might expect the gas cloud, because we know it's very diffuse. Um, more or less, the star would sit still, and the gas cloud would go around it. But the fact they're actually going around the middle indicates that this gas cloud must weigh about as much as a star. In many cases, it's actually considerably more than the star. So we're actually talking about... That sounds like a very strange, diffuse gas cloud. We it know does. it's see-through. Yeah. So it sounds to me like we're going to need some more clues to sort this out.